Welcome to the Crypto Mobcast, hosted by me, a sexy hot female from the UK. Hey Andy, how's it going? I'm all good, mate. I've had a, had a week off work, for, so it's been quite nice. Weather's been shite, but other than that, I've been putting about doing random stuff, making my usual videos and cracking on my group, so been a steady week. How about yourself? Not bad. It's The weather's improving. It was a bit nasty the start of the week. Um, I had to put the heating on the other day because it was freezing. But other than that, I mean, blue skies today. It's not that hot compared to last week, which is always a bonus. But It's coming. The hot weather's coming next week. Yeah, I was just about to say that. Like, literally, as things start to turn a little bit with the weather, you know, people are starting to go back to work, which is kind of funny at the same time. But mm. other than that, Always hunky dory. We've got a really interesting topic today. If you're new, you probably never really understood what Tether is and how it works and all kinds of little flag points with it. So that is our main topic of conversation. Obviously, do check us out on socials, give us a little follow, and kind of obvious crypto mobcast. You can find us very, very easily. So let's get into the serious question first. Now it's time for Would You Rather? Would you rather spend a year with Justin Sun or a year in prison? That is the easiest one we've had yet. I would, I'd rather spend a year in prison. I could not last. <laughs> I, I couldn't last a day with him. Oh, no. I couldn't God. even last the banquet of his whatever $1.6 million banquet you were planning with Buffet. I couldn't, I couldn't handle that, never mind a year. So I, I'd, I'd be in prison picking up soap all, year, all day long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, such a punchable head. I, know. Oh, I think I know your answer, but what would you say? Um, I'd, I'd first ask for some conditions. Um, do I have earplugs and stuff, and do I have a bit of space? But if I'm literally chain linked to him, I'm definitely going in prison for a year. No yeah. chance. My head would go to mush. It'd be disgusting. And I just I, 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 I'm tired of reading his tweets, man. It's it's terrible. Yeah. But oh. I mean, once, he's definitely one of the worst in the space by far. Yeah. Once we um, we've gone past news and have a talk about Tether, will I'll I'll read some of his tweets out to you because he's um, he seems to find quite a bit of information to do with his Tether recently. So, oh, it's it's just if we're ever going to do an episode about influencers in the space or like the project leaders, he's got to be number one on the dartboard of being the biggest dickhead of all time. I agree. Gotta be. He's got a massive forehead, so it'd be a great little target. <laughs> it would. <laughs> Anyways, I'll let you crack on with the news before I insult more people. This week's news and what's hot other than me. Yeah, so let's start off with Telegram. I mentioned it, I'm not sure if it was last episode, but episode before about making their own cryptocurrency, which was Ton. Um, Telegram has now shut its cryptocurrency operation down. After years of drama with the SEC, Telegram is calling quits to its crypto focus subsidiary, which was Tom, which was the Telegram Open Network. Um, the boss, Pavel Durov, um, dropped a, a tweet the other day saying Telegram's active involvement with Tom is over. Um, the Tom was a blockchain platform designed to offer decentralized cryptocurrency to anyone with a smartphone in a similar fashion to Facebook's Libra project, which we've not really heard much about. Quite a big thing, as in, they took in, um, what was it, 1.7 billion they raised in the, um, the pre-ICO, and then that's all gone to shit. Yeah, it's it's one of those ones where it wasn't really for retail investors, it wasn't for us, but it got a lot of publicity, it got a lot of interest, got a lot of money raised very, very, very quickly. But I think it's a good thing. I think Telegram doesn't need a coin. It doesn't want to be a part of that caveat, in my view. I think it should use existing established coin it should use the likes of it probably should entitled it hard one to decide this but i think if the lightning network takes off i think telegram btc lightning network would be a good fit for speed and stuff obviously you've got other coins as well obviously available but i just don't see why having an extra asset going into the market from another company will will benefit Telegram, it's already established, it's already good. It just needs it just needs capability to be make make a crypto like what Reddit's Reddit's doing. Um Moon but yeah, yeah, I think I think it's definitely interesting to see that they have backed out. Obviously, the SEC obviously 
have little issues with companies like that. So it doesn't, you know, it's not too alarming, but I don't, don't see, I do not see the need for all these. I don't even see the need for Reddit to have everyone. All they should do is implement using a different already established coin, like, like Bitcoin or Ethereum or XRP. Just implement one of them rather than make, there's already thousands out there and, and bloody 80% of them are scams. We don't, we don't need another one back in, do we? Nah, that's true. Um, one thing I do want to say though, we'll, I'll probably talk about this in more in, in more detail, but a lot of the market overall, you said 80%, I'll, I'll probably say it's, you probably got to be about 80% of it's scam, about 10% of it's small shit companies, and you got 10% that are battling for top spots of their industry, essentially. Yeah. And, you know, even then you got random numbers flying around. It's like, it's it doesn't make sense in terms of how it all works. And that's how I see the market. And if Tron are going to come in with a big, massive sack of billions and go, oh, look at us, we're, we're going to do this. And we say, well, what's the point, mate? You've got all the other coins. You might as well just crack on and do that. It's oversaturating the market again. Um, it's the same with payment processing um, cards. I wasn't a fan of Wirex doing their own coin. I just see it absolutely pointless. What's the point? Because their buyback program, it gives you Satoshis anyway. So what's the point? Yeah. Another waste of time, but... Anyway, oh, yeah. let's move. Let's move on. Anyway, so um, CoinDesk news yesterday saying that many effort whales might be leaving for Bitcoin. Data is showing. So while um, while effort's price has risen by nearly fifty percent this year, the number of addresses holding a large amount of the currency, popularly known as whales, has declined significantly. Oh, so, uh, yeah. So a seven-day average of the number of unique addresses holding ten thousand effort or more. Has fell to 1,050 on Tuesday. That's the lowest level since January 2019. Wow, it's quite a big number, isn't it? It's... That's bearish as fuck. That. Hmm. That's interesting because it's only happened when you look at the BTC dominance go up, and when that happens, people start getting a bit twitchy. Um, obviously, their satoshi values overall, but more, mainly whales in the game. They don't worry too much about the BTC Satoshis if they're holding a large chunk of, say, Ethereum. It's because majority of the time, a lot of their holding will be in Ethereum. They'll probably count it as Ethereum. Big problem with that is, overall, if whales are starting to decrease their you know, the overall stance on it, and it is going to Bitcoin, that will lead a massive gap in the market in terms of a potential short opportunity, in my view. Um, but I think I think people are stupid. If 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 Ethereum goes down to say a hundred dollars, one hundred twenty five dollars, and you're not even considering that as a potential long term hold, I think it's stupid um, overall because it's got multiples in it. And even if Ethereum for its life cycle overall goes from a hundred dollars back up to three hundred dollars a few times every year, it makes you money every time. Whereas with Bitcoin at ten k, to make that sort of money, it's got to go to thirty thousand. So. It's definitely echoes of FOMO. I don't know what you think, but in my eyes, it's definitely FOMO. 100%. Totally agree, right? Yeah. I, I don't believe that. I, I know that people, it's saying that they are leaving um, Ethereum, but I don't believe they're going to Bitcoin just to make up them, them few few percentage when they can, they can stay in Ethereum and make much bigger gains. So there's definitely more money to be made in F with the lower prices. And the same with all other cryptocurrencies down in that level. Oh yeah, that, when the dominance of Bitcoin drops, it, you'll you'll see a massive difference. Even today, when I'm looking at the charts, it's like it looks really odd today. Seeing like XRP one percent, Ethereum just under two percent. You got Cardano V chain zero percent literally, and then you have got Bitcoin just pumping. It doesn't make sense. It, it's definitely artificial, and we will come on to why that is probably the, the case. Yeah. Right, next, moving on to a bit of crypto tax here. We went on this for a while, have we? So IRS is reportedly cracking down on crypto taxes. The United States Internal Revenue Service is reportedly emailing crypto startups and are looking to get contractors to help with calculating crypto users' tax. So the US uh, IRS is allegedly looking for third-party contractors to assist with calculating taxpayers' gains and losses from crypto transactions. According to a post, the crypto tax software firm received an email from IRS 
accompanied by a statement of work which revealed about the tax collecting agencies engaging in outside contractors to assist in its calculating of taxpayers' crypto transactions. Well, looks like we're all over them. We're trying to get some money in out of It's going to get worse as well. The, the bigger this boom, well, boom, I wouldn't call it boom yet, but the bigger we go, the more opportunities there is for income for government, even though they are against us and they've always said, oh, Bitcoin's a scam, it's rat boys and all that bitch. But ultimately, if it's making people money, they want a slice of that. And it happens everywhere. And I'm literally watching the news ticker now and something just came up. Over 222 million, okay, has came out of the exchanges post halving. Yes, that is a lot of money. I was, just, I, was, I was literally reading that just before we came on as well. It's yeah. it's a lot of money that have been withdrawn from crypto, and it shows that people are starting to take profits, although the price is pumping very weirdly, um, mm -hmm. which could be something to do with Tether, but we don't know yet that. But you would have thought so. It's having a little bit of an impact on that price shooting up, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah, definitely. And if people are taking profits, people are going to take notice, and if price action is going the right way, more people are going to take notice, but I, f I think it is so artificial. And I'll come on to my reasons in the main topic. But the fundamentals of you know the government, for example, of opportunity, why they're looking into crypto more, why they're starting to look at stable coins and building their own little stable stuff to kind of make things happen. Look at the likes of Facebook, etc. They want to profit on this ever-growing industry and. You know, you're kidding yourself if you're trying to feel that, oh, the government are just going to lie down and just watch this grow. They're not. I think like a lot of the price predictions in Bitcoin are very, very over the top. And I think the futures market, the CME, for example, is definitely designed to kind of, you know, suppress the price a little bit. Because can you imagine the tax bills and all kinds of, like, not so much tax bills, but the tax fraud that will be done? to try and hide your profit if Bitcoin goes to like a million dollars. It will be absolutely boggling. And the government and not, or any government, are not going to go, hold on a minute, I'll just let you crack on with that. You can go and enjoy your profit, mate. Fuck off. They're going to ask for 40%, 50%, whatever the hell they want. And that's why America tax is so bad. And we're lucky in the UK, but we've got to try and, you know, we've got to keep on top of it. We've got to make sure we know what we're doing. But it's an ever-evolving door. And oh, it's, it, honestly, some countries are like, their tax laws are like non-existent at the moment until people start taking notice of it it will definitely change so top tip if you're new to the industry and you're worrying about tax either ask an accountant that if you've got a lot of money in or literally simply check your government guidance because i think the uk has changed three times last year in terms of little bits of guidance it always updated every three months it was updating it's crazy um so just keep on top of it because it's, it's it's an absolute minefield realistically I think there is um, websites and companies out there that just solely deal with crypto tax. So if you you say a quick Google, you can you can find what you need to find for each specific country um, online. Yeah, there's there's um there's an API one where it connects to your exchange. So if say if you use Binance for example, it will just connect to your exchange. It will calculate the difference between when you bought, when you sold, and it will give you the price variation of what tax you need to pay. And it also sets for the country. It's a it's quite well, it's not quite expensive, but it can be a very nice investment if you are looking to save a headache and you want to be tax efficient. Certainly, if you're making decent chunks of money and, and you know you're in the UK, for example, if you're making over 12 grand in profit every year, um, it's probably a good little investment to make sure you are tax efficient so people don't get backdated on all kinds of shitty expenses. That could maybe happen. Who knows? Let's talk. Use hashtag CryptoMobcast to join in. Let's talk about Tether. So just before we actually have a little discussion about it, I just want to, if, if you've not used Tether before, if you've not currently understand what it is, I'll just give you a, a small breakdown of what Tether is. So Tether is a crypto with a value meant to mirror the value of the US dollar. The idea was to create a stable crypto that can be used like digital dollars. Coins that serve this purpose of being a, a stable dollar substitute are called stable coins according to their site tether converts cash into digital currency to anchor or tether the value of a coin to the price of a natural currencies like the us dollar the euro or the yen so tether is issued on three different blockchains it's issued on the omni blockchain the tron network and ethereum blockchains 
Um, and we'll come on to Tron in a minute because we've had a lot of printing over the last, you could, you could call it a couple of weeks, but you could also say probably the last six weeks, we've had a lot of printing going off. And um, we'll just take a look at whale alerts in, in a minute. But yeah, um, Tron has been supposedly had 2.1 billion um, USDT sent to their address. Yeah, 2.18 billion, according to Justin, Justin Sun's recent tweet. Wow. It's scary, that, isn't it? Like, just to put this into simple maths for people who are a little bit new or you don't quite understand, that is about, what, well, maybe about 8% of the entire industry, that amount of sum, 1.8 billion, maybe even less than that. 2.18 um, billion it is. 2.18. So if you look on coin market cap, let me just get this up. Overall, the market. It, this is this is very subjective, by the way. This reasoning, um, market capitalization is usually used for stocks, not so much for crypto. But with cryptocurrency, you can artificially pump out or change it due to the circulating supply. Basically, it's a price times circulating supply. Now, if you calculate the fact that how much has just been printed over the last couple of weeks, that would put Tether alone at number ten spot in the overall market of the of the industry. There's over 5,400 coins. That is like, what, 0. 0. 0 whatever percent. It's tiny. So you've only got coins that are technically bigger are the likes of Ethereum, XRP, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, Binance Coin, etc. That already, that amount of money eclipses how much those coins technically, even though it's a bit of a subjective matter, in worth. That is frightening. That's insane. Just while you're on coin market cap as well, if you look at the 29th of March 2020, the, the market cap of Tether was 4.6 billion, and look it's at it double. now, it's, it's, double. Got, it's actually doubled in much space of what has it been about? Just short of three months. It's well less than that now, two months. It's doubled in price, and and majority of that has gone to um, Justin Sun's bank account. You know, it's funny, right? We'll talk about this as well in a second. But the, obviously COVID-19 and tax relief and freaking I'm in trouble, I'm going to die sort of thing. He actually tried to get money from the government to try and keep him operational. Yet he spends millions on a lunch. He spends millions on all kinds of other shit. He's got a freaking tether printer. How does that work? I mean, absolute milk in the industry. And he's literally one of those. He's, he's basically a freaking... Oh, he's, he's a knobhead, isn't he? Let's be honest. But that is, that is alarming to think that Tether's just literally doubled. It's, it's not doubled due to, you know, use case or anything useful. It's just doubled because it can. And it literally came from Tron. And, well, Tron's an absolute heap of shit anyways, let's be honest. I mean, I, what I don't understand is the fact that... So now TRC20 tokens, which is um, the Tron network, they are having... Um, the USDT pegged on their network. Why would that not? <laughs> I don't understand why it gets added to the Tether cap. I just I can't work it out in my head. Why there's two point six billion just randomly added to the Tether just because he wants it on his network? Ah, it's a joke. It's an absolute joke because of what the coin is. And the problem is, you got three chains, haven't you? You got obviously the ERC twenty, the Tron, and the, the Omni. The problem is. They all interlink to the same thing. It's like a railroad. It just goes into the same thing and it makes it artificially look bigger. And the biggest problem is people use a tether print as a buy signal, as a pump. It's not always the case because you can short Bitcoin now with the US US tether. The problem is, you know, a lot of these are either infantry or you know where they're going. It tells you. Like if if you see any sort of thing that says um tether treasury to Binance, like what whatever it is it's usually going to go towards a trade. It's, it's not an investment. It's usually an artificial pump to get people out. And it looks like it might be linked to a number of things, what's going on now with miners. Um, there may be a few miners trying to get out of jail a little bit with like getting some profits and then pulling out at a certain point. But there's all kinds of different factors in why we are pumping right now. There's obviously halving. You've got the CME gap, which is pretty much almost filled, give or take. You've got all kinds of different factors of like, obviously... COVID-19 and people wanted to go, oh, Bitcoin's a safe haven, isn't it? No, stock market brokers are not putting their money in Bitcoin because it's volatile as fuck. 
and you've obviously got our printer. But overall, if this printer wasn't there with Bitcoin and we were, you know, less volatile, I think people would look at Bitcoin and obviously other investments in crypto as a safe haven. I don't think they will now with all of this. And they're basically going to go from the stock market to another rigged market due to artificial funds. It doesn't make any sense. And I don't know if you agree the same way with me, but it's kind of like what it's it's very, very hypocritical where we say, oh, the Federal Reserve is printing three trillion, whatever. But we're doing the exact fucking same on a much smaller scale and a much infant, more volatile market. It doesn't make any sense in my eyes. It is exactly the same as what the Fed are doing, basically. And if you the printing, Justin Sun has not swapped two billion dollars for um, for USDT, has he? He's not going to pull two billion out of his pocket just for that. I mean, look, what's the Tron market cap? That's less than two billion dollars, isn't it? He, it's only just one billion. It's literally on the crisp of like one billion. <laughs> so we're, like we're one billion we're, and seven million. It's like nothing. It does say on the Tether website you you have to swap dollars for Tether. <laughs> Where's t- where the hell has two billion come from? Tell you what is crazy because of the market cap and stuff like that. The actual volume over the volume is higher than their actual market cap at the moment, which is absolutely mental. Mm. Um, there's very few coins that are like that, which is like just shows you the interest in the Tron network due to the fact of that. And there's only a couple of coins that are literally trading higher, and they're all stable coins, realistically. Um, well, apart from Ethereum Classic, but that, that tends to do a bit of a run sometimes. But yeah, it's it's this is honestly frightening, really is. It, it's it's uh, it's hard to put into words that this is such a, a rigged market. The but, word is manipulation. That's what it is. Yeah, it's manipulation. But it's exactly the same as what's going on. Like we said, with Fed, it's they're pumping it up to try and make it look good before something inevitably happens. Which, as in you're looking at the, the stock market, they could drop any time. We've had a, a few days of red. If that continues, and it's going to look nasty. And same with same with Bitcoin market. If it's been pumped for what now? Is it about six, eight seven weeks. weeks or eight weeks? And eight weeks, there's been no relief. Um, People are taking profits, but then profits have been pumped back up by the um, the tether. In my opinion, that's what's going on, um, and that's got to stop at some point, and and we should turn around. Well, just another alarm bell for people who are like thinking, well, is this real or not? Bitcoin, as it stands, is up seven point eight eight percent. Right when you look down and you keep going down, coin market cap, a lot of altcoins are either in the red in you know USD value. And there's only a few that are pumping. That is abnormal. If BTC is doing an, an organic pump and a push due to price action, due to new investors coming in, a bit of hype, whatever, everything goes up, literally in USD. When you go over and flip it to slash BTC, it is a fucking bloodbath. It is literally dominance is absolutely through the roof. And normally, if it is organic, people are also buying into other altcoins because Bitcoin's bullish. That's usually the way it is. But right now, it looks like, as you say with the Ethereum news, people are jumping ship and they're going, FOMO, I'm going to get my wings out, I'm going to jump to the next ship, which is obviously Bitcoin as it stands. And I think the, the mining narrative of Harvin's kind of you know flagged a few people a little bit. Now, I always say that I'm a holder. I hold my Bitcoin. I've got a, a trading account which is designed to hedge, as in, if BTC is going to go to shit, I'll obviously short it and I'll make more money. If it doesn't, it doesn't matter because I'm still making money overall. Double bubble when we go along at the same time or short at the same time, it doesn't matter. But the fundamentals are, if a coin isn't pumping in a same sort of motion, essentially, it's a bit weird. And you know, if, if you've got a coin that religiously goes up with Bitcoin every single time and it isn't, you got a question, well, why? Why is, why is, not, why is that coin? in USD values, not moving. And it's literally about, I'm going to do an estimate here on the top 100, about 60% of them are red, which isn't good, or at least below 1%. Usually if Bitcoin's up seven or 8%, it's usually, they're usually up about five to 10, give or take on averages anyways. But they're not not following. It's just showing my other, I was just reading here as well about um, Bitcoin, Tether and Ether accounting for 90 percent of the trading volume so that just shows that on the lower caps not much is going on shite absolutely dog shit and that's the biggest problem with the space and that's why you get these massive pumps that catch people out because there's so many trading gaps and you can't really 
yeah, can't really make an excuse for it. But if everything is focused towards Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, etc., and or even some of the other higher cap coins that are like out there, you know, there are always going to be opportunities for people to make money and pump coins, and that's why a lot of coins do pump due to luxury little news articles and stuff that oh this is going to make you a million dollars it's all bollocks but ultimately people fall for it and you know it's the same with the mining narrative oh um bitcoin stock flow ratio it's not going to fail it's never failed once but the reality is we spoke about it last week we have not pumped realistically like prior to halving we didn't pump enough even before halving we dumped quite a lot but we didn't dump enough which has probably created this little wave of you know resistance retest essentially but it's artificial due to the fact that, well, it probably would never have happened when you consider the Google trends, when you consider that the tweet volume is going down of the overall market in terms of interest for Bitcoin. No new investors are coming in. It's just that billion odd quid or dollars, whatever, is going into the market and artificially pumping it, which is the worrying part. And that's where people get caught out. That's where new investors get wrecked because they don't understand the overall concept that markets move due to volume of buyers not volume of artificial shite because eventually it will turn around and it will drop and it will it will hurt and you know you, you've seen it in the stock market where things dropped hard that went up due to six seven eight trillion pumped into the market it is the exact same scenario it is i'm just um scrolling down now i've, I've saved a, an image earlier on just find it so I've just added up all the, um, well, we're doing, I've added up all the amount of tether that have been printed in the last seven days. Have a guess. Uh, 600 million. 1.3 billion. I was fucking miles out. I know. So <laughs> the last one was $200 million printed off that one. That's also gone to Justin Sun's pocket, your, your best mate. Sometimes I'm thinking... Would it be better off being in his pocket for a year and just nick it? But I can't stand him. Um, I think it will kill me. But that is like, as you say, 1.3 trillion, a billion, a trillion, ah, lol, billion, billion um, would literally put this coin ahead of Stellar Lumens and Cardano in terms of valuation. Like free money out of the thin air. Winning lottery ticket, off you go, son. It's absolutely crazy when you think about it. I need to have a research into what is actually happening with this tether on the Tron network, because it's for, for a bit of a red flag flag up for me. About I, I've never bought TRX myself. Um, I don't know what all the community think about it because I've never speak to them. But I'm gonna have a dig into that because it's quite annoying. I might even do a bit of a Justin somebody exposal. <laughs> yeah, you'll get a lot of haters, but. A lot of Tron users are like Moon Boys because of Justin Sun, or they bought it right at the start, or they, they might be bag holders as well because it absolutely rocketed. But when you think about it overall, and you're thinking, well, why do Tron need Tether? Well, they don't, technically. Um, you know, there's all kinds of different situations where I don't, I just don't see the point of having. But uh, all right, here's a question for you, right? A question for you. Do you think the industry would be better with or without a stable coin or any stable coin? There's been some news about that recently. I'm saying that they potentially could get rid of them. Um, if the ability was there for everyone with low fees to purchase cryptocurrency easily, then I can't see the point of having Tether. It would make it more easily available for the public because currently, People still don't know red from rice when it comes to crypto. I've got people messaging me inbox every day saying, I do I buy this, I do I do that. It's like, it's simple once you've done it, but looking at it initially, it's hard. You, you don't understand it. And yeah. I think if we, didn't, if we didn't have Tether and we had a very, very easy option of just buying crypto with pounds sterling or fiat or whatever currency you're in, it'd make a big difference, I think, that for, for crypto going forward, for Bitcoin, for, for any of them really just there needs to be easier ways i know there's coinbase and you can buy on wirex etc but the fees are just the fees outweigh it sometimes it's quite annoying having to pay a couple of quid just to buy something when all you want to do is swap it at the end of the day i i agree i 
thinking about this, right? You know, I don't know how much information you've got in terms of like stock market knowledge, but if you go on like the IG website and you've got all the stocks and ETFs and all that shite listed there, I don't see why. Now this is pro this is weird, but I don't see why we need a million exchanges. I don't see why we need all the exchanges to have different coins. Why don't they not all have the same amount of coins? Why don't they not have everything? So people could just buy them as and when. And if you're unhappy with it, you press the fucking sell button. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And then it goes straight in to the default setting, whether it's USD, whether it's yen, whether it's GDP, whatever, doesn't matter. That's the problem that we get. And that massive bridge between going from your wallet, putting your card details in, from going into Coinbase, wherever you want to use, <laughs> into Bitcoin. And then you're like, oh, I bought Bitcoin, but I want to buy Sausage Fest coin because it's <laughs> on a random exchange and I want it. And then people ask you that question, like, right, I want to buy Sausage Fest. How do I buy it? Well, you buy that by going onto this exchange called Burger Bun, right? And you then got to then send your money over to there, which is a bit dodgy anyway. Then you buy the coin. Then you get to the point of when you bought the coin, you got nowhere to store it because no other exchange or no other, well, the exchanges are dodgy anyways, but you've got no real hardware wallet to do it. I think get rid of all that because it's bollocks, right? I think we need, in my view, a very simple traditional system, which is decentralized. It has every single crypto on there. It's secure by a hardware wallet or whatever hardware wallet is out there. And it is a very, very simple off-ramp into fiat. Yeah, there may be more tax impl implementations and stuff like that because you're going from crypto into fiat again if you're taking profit. But I don't see the harm in having a shareholding element where you literally, or coin holding, where you're literally holding the asset, the underlying asset on your exchange or on the ledger for it to go up in value. Then you've got like a trading version where it's leveraged, like IG, how it all works. And I just, honestly, I, it baffles me that you've got like, let me just give you an example, just food for thought, right? We'll go on to Bitcoin here. And we're going to go on to exchanges. I think you have food on the brain at the minute because we're talking about sausage fests and burger buns and a bit, a bit of food for thought. Have you, have you been have you eaten today? Nah. Get some it down here, lad. Um, get, get some sausage going down here. Wouldn't I, I wonder how that would work fundamentals, right? So market pairs and exchanges for Ethereum, right? Let me just scroll all the way down. Fuck my God, my Jesus, fuck. Load more, you haven't laughed. What are you looking at? Lot. Are you looking at coins or exchanges here? I'm looking at exchanges just to give you an insight. For oh, me. I, I think I think at some point <laughs> the amount of exchanges outweighed the amount of coins. You're probably not wrong because my email box is fucking full of them. Yeah, I've um... over 800 so far. Bear with me. This is just Ethereum, by the way. Oh, it'll, be, it'll, be, it'll be endless. Jesus Christ. And remember, there's a lot of them not even listed on CoinMarketCap. There's millions. Right, put it this way, there's millions. There's no point going over it. But <laughs> I, 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 I think it's fucking mental that we've got a million exchanges that all do the same sort of thing. They're all built on the same systems. And they all hold different coins. It's a nightmare for KYC. Just have it one big, massive system. But that's probably a system for Binance. So that would probably do because they're monopolizing everything and they're buying everything because they don't give a shit. But, you know, if I was ever to make a business model to make things simple, it would be an exchange for crypto to make it very, very easy to just basically buy and hold an asset into crypto, off ramp into fiat very quickly. And it is very traditional. So if anyone has any good funding solutions, give me a shout because I'll probably try and build something. But, I personally don't have the time for it, but someone could probably nick that idea. I think, I think the, top 10, the top 10 exchanges with volume out there should be the lead. So, I mean, I'm not all for having one exchange, but I'm all for having some ones that are regulated and easy, easy to use because that's, that's key and it? it needs to be easy. Because it, it isn't easy. And when you start putting into context, when, when you say to people, right, oh, Bitcoins, I bought Bitcoin at, say, 5K. It's now 10K. What do I do? Well, what do you want to do? I don't know. Well, you've got two options. You either 
take it out fully and put it into your bank or you put it into Tether. Then people go, what's Tether? Oh, God. What have you done? Why have you invested? You know, people don't understand the basics of what Tether is to understand that it is a stable coin and it is there to hopefully help you, but not all the time it helps you because people then use that as, it's basically like the pre-ejaculation button. Let's be honest. Oh, God, it's fucking dumping. I'm going to Tether, shoot, off you go. But they don't. They, they just think, oh, bollocks, you know, I'm just going to put all my money into Tether and hope it goes down. That's the worst thing you do. Traditionally, what we need to do is hold in Bitcoin as well. But we also need a real simple solution to allow people who are very, very not non-tech savvy to just jump in and be able to go, right, this is really easy. I just put my money in, I buy Bitcoin, I hold Bitcoin. I can sync up my wallet, happy days, winner, winner, chicken dinner. And if they want to go into whatever they want, they can very, very easily. But the solutions right now, even Binance is changing every 10 seconds. Oh, a little layout change. Oh, they change a couple of the candles. They can't stick on one layout. It's, that's doing my head in. Yeah. God, it's a and raven, this one, isn't it? Christ. <laughs> I've got a question for you. What do you think about the digital dollar? I think it's already here. Do you reckon what? Hidden in one of the cryptos that we currently have, or...? I think there's definitely been a conversation, hasn't there? In top-level government, there's always going to be someone go, well, boys and girls, our printers are a bit shit. We're running out of paper. We've got to save the rainforest. All kinds of stuff like that. They've got to be thinking digital. They've, my God, I mean, the TVs are digital, for fuck's sake. Never mind the currency. I mean, in my eyes, I think there's got to be a conversation where it's already probably taken place, that it's probably already in. Um Obviously, the moving forward, we've obviously in the seventies off the gold standard. Fair enough, but what now? Like reality-wise, do we have the technology to allow it? Will blockchain be a part of that? Will all kinds of other functions happen? Will it be the cryptocurrencies that we know? It's an impossible question, but I think personally, I think it's either here or they've already spoken about it at length on how to implement it and. It wouldn't surprise me in 10 years' time if we did have a, a, an official digital kind of currency where it was like, well, not so much the currency for all, but something that is a much more reliable option than what we've got currently. But who knows? I what think, do you think? I think COVID-19 is actually going to push this forward because people don't want to be handling money now, do they? They don't want to be catching stuff that can be easily transmitted across notes. Um they want something that they don't have to see, they don't have to touch. It's, it's possibly built into the phone like Apple Pay, for example, or Google Pay. I think COVID-19, like, inadvertently is going to push it forward a little bit. And I th Americans have been talking about it recently. Um, there's been news that the Stellar Network, who've been on words with the government, wanting them to use their network. So who knows? It could be out there, but... Like I say, it might have already been talked about. It might have already been set up, but we we just don't know, do we? The thing is, though, like it's you got to think of what we've got now. We've got contactless payments. We've got Apple Pay, Android Pay, whatever. We've got all kinds of different things that we could do to make it happen very, very, very efficiently and very fast. Personally, cash for me, I don't use it. My missus uses it quite a lot, but I don't give a shit about it. It doesn't really bother me at all. The only thing I use cash for is to chuck coins at people. That's it. I'm not really that violent, honestly. But overall, <laughs> it just depends how it works. And I think, yeah, there's a lot of conspiracy theories and like obviously Americans believe anything these days. But, you know, I think it does make sense that, you know, cash is, oh, is it a waste of time? Is it a waste of space? And you got to think of all the other jobs that are linked to obviously having cash you know obviously different roles in jobs atms all kinds of stuff and you know it also ties into the fact of making tax digital which is also interesting because you got to think of if you're taking payment as cash as a business in the uk it's all kinds of like it's, it's a bit weird now you've got to declare it in such a way and it's harder to do it whereas if it's all in a digitalized system where you're just taking money on a card it's automatically done for you it's literally efficient and everything's amazing but the way i see it i think if we are going down the self-service checkout of like any supermarket i think over the next 10 years i think a digital dollar or cash or whatever will be there and i think we'll start to see you know 
less cash essentially being used. And then that's where your mobile phones will come in. That's where your Apple watches will come in, you know, digital wallets and stuff, and obviously your cards. But it's definitely it's definitely interesting to see if the snowball effect is increasing due to COVID-19, due to the transmission of diseases. But then you've got crime as well. Will it reduce crime? Most likely. Will people get mugged for a card? Probably not as much. Well, you know, drugs are, you can go on to a massive tangent on this one, but, you know, you can't snort, you know, cocaine with, well, you, you can with money, but you can't do it that well with anything else, realistically. Let's be honest, you can't do it with Bitcoin, for example. <laughs> no. But it's interesting. It is. Something will come one day, won't it? Whether we, um, whether we're still around when it does, but you'd think something will come over it next something should be getting used soon enough i think it's closer than we think i think i think a lot of things are closer than what we think i think you know all that kind of element of what i spoke about it's pretty much here anyways it's not it's just not put in writing it's not put on the wall and i think when you look at cryptocurrency and all the stuff that's happening with crypto in terms of blockchain technology and auditing and stuff that's really really helpful and will help but we kind of, as I said, we shoot ourselves in the foot by printing loads of tether. We we do all kinds of weird shit that we shouldn't do. But, you know, if we are going to set an example and we're going to make it a less volatile space, we've got to start thinking, well, why are we printing money? What's the point? We might as well just, you know, do it properly, do it the efficient way. And it's, as I say, it's very, very hypocritical if we're saying about the Federal Reserve printing cash that's un- unlimited where we've got the exact same printer for tether. So... That's my viewpoint on it. I think digital dollar is probably going to be happening at some point. I think a less volatile Bitcoin and Ethereum, etc., will make the markets more attractive for any investor. But I also think we've got the demand of new people that are hard. Well, not hard, but they're hard to get in. They're hard to get into the market because you've got to literally do a little course. You've got to watch YouTube videos. It's not as easy as just opening an account and go, I want to buy that. But it doesn't work like that. It's 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 a pain in the ass and people flap and break and don't understand. like some people don't even understand what a percentage gain is and like that's like they've never invested before they don't know what they're buying realistically they just want to buy something that turns <laughs> turns twice as big that's what i need to do yeah. the the thing that buying bitcoin at 20k is going to make them a millionaire if they put a fiver in it doesn't work like that i've seen some terrible posts recently of people putting uh, someone on my youtube actually this is a good one put in two Two pound into Bitcoin, right? Put two pound in. And for him to convert it, <laughs> Coinbase took like one pound fifty off him. <laughs> oh, that's brutal. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't know if it's like genuine or not, but it made me laugh. But people are of that ilk and they will not touch it or they will touch it, but they'll put like 20 quid in or they'll get 20 pound given for birthday or whatever. Oh, I got Bitcoin, yay. Oh, it's worth nothing now. It's like I bought it at the top, you know, we've got to look at so many things to make this industry better. And I think Tether is one of those ones where it could make it better, but it could also make it a lot worse. And I don't know. I think I would like them to remove it in, in a way and have it an easier off ramp solution into fiat where it is, you know, a usable thing. I don't believe the hype of, you know, Bitcoin is going to replace the dollar. I believe the hype that it's going to be an alternative mechanism for payment, same as all the other coins out there. But that's my viewpoint. I don't know if you feel the same. Um, I think the same. Mate. Yeah, I think like I don't think Bitcoin is going to be the one that is used by everybody in the future. I think it's just a really good starting block, and it's it's kickstarted a few things into 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 play that possibly wouldn't have happened without Bitcoin. So something will happen digital wise. We will move away from cash, but no more snorting drugs, so don't know what we're going to do. Thank you for tuning in. Join us here at the same time next Sunday.